Hey YouTube, this sword is the Oliver Cromwell sword. It's uh, designed by Paul Chen, made by Hanway Forge. It's a type of sword called a mortuary hilt sword. And they say this sword is a replica of that carried by Oliver Cromwell. Now Oliver Cromwell was uh, a very significant military leader uh, in the English Civil War. All right, and we're talking late 1600s, all right? Now the overall length of this sword, 39.5 inches, right, and the length of the blade itself, it's just under 33 inches. It's also a very heavy sword, especially for a one-handed sword. Um, it's, it's slightly less than three pounds. I'm not a historian by any means, but according to my research, uh, this type of sword is related to the English uh, what's called a basket hilt sword and these sword, this type of sword is sometimes called a half basket uh, hilt sword and I've seen heavy one-handed swords similar to this I've seen uh, what's called a Scottish broadsword um, if you've ever seen the movie Rob Roy they actually use Scottish broadswords and to me this seem very similar in terms of being a heavy one-handed sword. It's a lot thicker and heavier than later swords like rapiers. All right, here is a close-up of the guard. The very nice elaborate handle. That is shark skin. Shark skin with a wire wrap gives a lot of traction. Right, and the guard itself is steel. All right, you see that? They say that's a foliage pattern. To me, it almost looks like a raptor's, like an eagle's claw or something, right? But you see why they call this sometimes a half basket, because, um, you know, there are, there is empty space here, but it still gives you a lot of protection. And it is ambidextrous. I am left-handed, so I like that it's completely ambidextrous. Now, this comes with an antiqued finish, so if it looks a bit worn, that is intentional, all right? It's called an antiqued finish. And the blade itself, it does have some texture, and again, that is intentional. All right, and you see that deep, the deep groove right there, all the way to there. And here is a close-up of the tip of the sword. That would, uh, you know, with the weight of this sword, this would easily just com completely go through an enemy. Here is the scabbard the sword comes with. It's leather here, and then under the leather is wood, and then it has steel accents. Steel accents there. And so that's the scabbard. All right, and overall, it's a pretty nice sword. You know, some people, they only like, say, Japanese swords. I actually like swords from all cultures. Uh, Greek, Roman, Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Western. Now, this sword is actually meant to be usable from horseback as well as uh, you know on your feet and that's probably why it does feel very heavy uh, it feels kind of blade heavy as well you definitely can't maneuver this the way you could maneuver say a lightweight katana and according to my research this type of sword is actually an ancestor of the more pre-modern and modern cavalry sabers but I can definitely see how this is just a powerful hack and thrust sword. Right? And in conclusion about this sword, uh, it is a very nice sword and I, I do recommend it. 